this is gold here. No, 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 no. My first deal, that 80 million, was the first deal I made. Oh, really? Yes. Wow. Wow. That was the <laughs> biggest sick, and guys. the first. Okay, the next deal I have to do better. No way. <laughs> yeah, is it? I want to do, I don't really like to talk about these oh. things. My congrats, really. <laughs> if you don't see it, go and watch it says. And welcome back to next episode, guys. So today we are here to within the lovely uh, Karina and with how lovely to host you over here into our channel. Uh, within the top performer of the real estate agency Provident, which is also the top performance for 2022, 2023. Mm -hmm. And I would even tell you that she made $80 million within the one hour. So <laughs> yeah, that, but that's one for the intro guys and welcome back. So Karina, how are you doing today? Good. Thank you so much guys for having me on board. It's a pleasure to be here with you guys. Thanks. Sure. And Andrew, yeah. how about you? How are you doing today? How was yeah, the work you, so Ken. far? It's uh, very cool, really. Yeah, nice, thank you. Nice, nice. So <laughs> today it's very hot day, but yeah. uh, uh, we have uh, yeah. more hot evening today. Yeah. <laughs> it is, it is. Karina, we would like to get into more of yourself. Mm -hmm. If we would like to know and uh, describe of yourself into our uh, audience. That. So let's just talk about you first at all. Okay, so to put the long story short and not to bore you guys, I was born in Kazakhstan and then... By like 11 years old, I moved to US. So I grew up in Boston and then I grew up wow. in uh, Washington, DC. I did my bachelor and master's and um, I studied neuroscience and public health. Wow. And um, somehow I ended up in Dubai and I ended up working in real estate and uh, loving it, to be honest, because the industry treated me very nicely. And, you know, it's a very good outlet for people who are ambitious and who want to you know, be their own boss and work for themselves. I think it's a very good start because it is commission based mostly. That's me in a nutshell. Uh, but we can talk about specific things more mm -hmm. because I know you guys have an audience who are interested in real estate and who are constantly on it the is, lookout to is. study. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, but be curious. So you said you studied in the in the U.S., right? Mm -hmm. So cautious to know that. So you ended up in the U.S., uh, I guess, um, to get an education, uh, as I understand. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, listen, uh, I have a very interesting scenario, I think, uh, just humbly speaking. Uh, I, I grew up very fast. So I understood and I saw that, OK, Kazakhstan is a great country, but I want something different and I want something more. And for me to get into like university and start a career, I definitely wanted to get like a head start because I speak Russian. I didn't know English well at right. that point. So I said, you know what, let's do it. Let's go to US, let's study English. At least I will like understand it better. Mm -hmm. And plus, you know, getting into college will be much easier once I'm in there. Uh, and uh, so you obviously know, know that uh, back in, back in when you used to be in Kazakhstan, mm -hmm. So you know that you got to study the medicine and health, health yeah. Uh, in the U.S. Yeah, yeah, I always knew that uh, because my grandmother uh -huh. was a doctor. Whoa, wow. okay. So you know, I had a very close connection with her, and at the age of three, she passed away, unfortunately. Wow. But she was always like a role model for me, and I was always interested by that field. So yes, before I even left for US, I said, okay, I want to be in medicine, whether it's clinical or research based, it's different, yeah, well, okay. but yeah. Uh -huh, that's interesting. And what mm. did you do? What did you do except from the medicine while you studied? Do you, do you, I mean, I don't know. Yeah. Like if you, obviously, you go out and I mean, you 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 went there and you partied and you explored the U.S. Right? Yeah. What was the something amazed? I mean, like something that you rem you still remember it uh, in the U.S. Tell tell us. Tell, I tell mean, us listen, story. U.S. is a different uh, world in my opinion because the mentality is completely different. There are a lot of people, and all of them are different. You know, from different parts of the world. Um, but regardless of all the experiences that I had, the best one that I still remember is uh, actually when I just got there, like maybe oh, six months yeah, after, because yeah, 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 yeah. I hated the place. And I was like, I don't want to be here. Please take me home. Like, no way. This is not for me. I cannot do it. So... So you still remember your first feelings when they just yeah, landed yeah, over yeah, there? Yeah, yeah, 100%. Because, you know, when you go and you, like, filled with that excitement and you don't really know... It is, it uh, is. You're happy and uh -huh. excited and looking forward to true, it. True. But then when you're young and you're placed in a very stressful environment, sometimes it's very hard. Uh -huh. And I'm not going to deny it was extremely hard for me, yeah. Uh -huh. 
Yeah, I just remember when I just landed. To, you just remind me of, of my story when yeah. I like. I, I'm, I'm sure everyone had a story yeah, of, of like when when someone else just landed in another place mm -hmm. and uh, they had the first feeling when you just landed and so much excitement. But then next six months are like crazy blooming you yeah, and you have yeah, to like course. work into the hustle. Yeah, and you have to adapt <laughs> as a person, right? It is, it is. Like it's a completely different I, yeah, world. So you have to navigate it and learn how yeah, to do it. Yeah, it is amazing feelings. It is yeah. amazing feelings. Yeah, yeah, 100%. So interesting, really. So Karina, can you talk about your uh, experience with uh, real estate? Maybe can you sure. make uh, three advices for uh, brokers' audience? It's mm -hmm. really appreciate. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I mean, listen, I have a lot of followers who are brokers and they constantly reach out to me and unfortunately i don't have time to answer to everyone but real estate is a very two-sided industry okay uh, you can look at it from the amount of money you can make in it and you can look at it as a career path right so it's not a corporate setup like most people know okay you go you get promoted and you know you climb up the ladder it's completely different, but it's it's a different game altogether. So I would say that, you know, if you are ambitious, if you are hungry, if you are innovative and you are kind of a people person, so you like to communicate, you like to like make connections, meaningful connections, then real estate is definitely something to consider because it's, um, it's a joy, honestly. Uh, if you don't treat it as work in one way, it's tremendous joy because you get to experience people, you get to meet new people. So obviously, you know, if you are striving to be your own boss, you're not afraid to talk to people, definitely consider real estate. Um, I never thought of real estate as a career at all. Like I never would have imagined that I would be a broker. Like ask me four years back, I would say no, <laughs> straight up no. Uh, but it just happened and I, I wasn't confident about the industry in the beginning, but it kind of sucks you in. And if you feel like you belong, it's a great place to be, honestly, uh, yeah. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. it's interesting. Uh, so uh, if we see for local market right mm -hmm. now, uh, maybe, you know, maybe 80 or maybe 90% mm -hmm. uh, all professional brokers, it's uh, a yeah. uh, beginner. Yeah, yeah. It's, I uh, mean, just honestly, new. it's just, uh, it's a very good point that you mentioned because there are a lot of real estate people in Dubai. Like I've never seen that amount of brokers in one place. And it seems as though everyone who comes to Dubai starts working in real estate in one way or another. Uh, it's a good thing, but it's also a very bad thing for the industry, I think. Yeah. 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 It's uh, if we see for all audience, professional brokers, it's uh, maybe uh, 73 or 75 uh, thousand mm -hmm. uh, yeah. professional brokers community. Yeah. It's uh, only brokers who has got a uh, professional number. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We, yeah. The brokers in, uh, number. Yeah. yeah. In uh, IT Salat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hindu. Uh, yeah. So, and only 10% it's mm -hmm. uh, professional brokers. Of course. Yeah? Of course. Who has yeah. got a good experience. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Can you make uh, top three advices? How will be? a uh, good professional broker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, listen, it all comes to ethics, right? And morality. I don't want to sound negative, but yes, there are a lot of brokers, like thousands, maybe over 40,000 unregistered brokers, which doesn't mean they're professionals. You know, if you go on Instagram and you start posting a house or a project that doesn't make you a professional. Unfortunately, a lot of like agents now are trying to sell things as if we're in like fish markets, you know, they'll sell you anything and everything as long as they get their commission. <laughs> so um, they don't put the client first. So my advice is, you know, what differentiates a broker? I don't like to say like professional or unprofessional. I like to say broker versus an expert, right? Yes, a broker true. is just true. a person who comes and connects you to, for yeah. example, you want to sell, you want to buy. Oh, great. I know you guys. Let me have commission for that. I don't care really what you want to buy, but you're selling. So, you know, it matches. Yeah. This is what a broker is. And this is what, unfortunately, a lot of people are today here because there's a lot of clients and I honestly don't know how they end up with like agents like this because this really, really hurts the industry like is, to the is, max, yeah. you know? So I would say put the client's needs first. Don't think about commission. Like I know it's hard because it's only commission based. So, mm -hmm. you know, if you don't close the clients, you might not have that 40,000. Mm -hmm. I get it. But 
when you work out of that space, everyone who's like aware, they will know that you're doing it for that reason. So, you know, later on, if you cannot sell your property, if there's some problem, if it's not delivered on time, where is that broker, right? Are you going to be there? Unfortunately, a lot of people are not. So just put the client first. I think this is the only like advice. You know what I mean? I'm also curious in terms of the uh, what you said earlier. So how long have you been studying the medicine into the US? Yeah, uh, so four, four and a half years. Four and a half years. Yeah. And uh, wow. so, yeah, four and a half years, it's quite a lot, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but then how did you end it up into the real estate? But how come like you, you switched it and like, how did you end yeah. it up over there? So yeah, it's so, cautious to know for audience too, I guess. Yeah, of course, because it's, it's a very dramatic switch. Uh -huh. I get it. Mm -hmm. um, Listen, I studied and I did, like, I'm a very fast person. I don't like to sit and wait. So even my master's and bachelor's, I did combine. So that's why it took oh, four okay. years. Okay. Uh, because usually it takes four and then plus two, it right? Is, it is. And um, I said, okay, you know what? I don't really have time to spend seven more years in med school. Let me just do this because it's not clinical medicine, but it's still within the same field. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then as I was graduating... COVID game. So uh -huh. January, that's when COVID kind of started appearing in uh -huh. US. Uh -huh. And the same year, May, I was graduating. Uh -huh. And so everything closed, obviously, uh -huh. you know, everyone started freaking out. And I said, you know what, uh, my parents are in Kazakhstan at that time. So I said, I'm going to come and I'm going to be with them because nobody knew, you know, what it was, what the severity is. So I went home, uh -huh. everything closed. We did the whole, um, yeah, it was tough you know, times, yeah. yeah isolation and stuff. And Dubai was one of the first places to open up fully for like tourists and you wouldn't feel like you're a weird person walking around, right? So uh, me and my friend in April, we went to Dubai. Mm -hmm. So for two in, weeks. In 2019. Sorry. 2021, yeah, sorry. April, uh, we came and- It's really early. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, we came and then I saw Dubai differently because mm -hmm. last time I was here, it was, there was no Burj Khalifa. It was still very conservative, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. not that many ex expats. Mm -hmm. So when I came, I was like, oh my God, like this is gold here. You uh -huh. know what I mean? Like <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's yeah. FinTech, there it is, it is, uh, you know, cryptocurrency was yeah. planning to come in. Binance was planning to come in. So a lot of things were happening in that one place. And it's very close to home. It's only four hours. And True. it's in the middle of like, you know, you can go to Turkey, you can go to other places. True. So I said, you know what, let me try. I don't know, but it looks like a place to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and for some reason, I just felt like, okay, you know what, I can put my American dream and plan on hold a bit. Mm -hmm. Let me try it. Uh -huh. Right. Because, uh, you know, it was different. Mm -hmm. And I always am curious about different things. So that June, I relocated. I applied online. I got uh, called by three companies. Uh -huh. wow. And so I just said, you know what, I'm just going to go. I'm going to try one and see how it goes from there. Okay. You just said to yourself, let me try it in terms yeah. of the real estate. And you yeah. took it easy, as I understand. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, for me, I didn't know much, you know, like I didn't know which field uh -huh. or which industry mm -hmm. was in demand in Dubai. And from what I saw, mm -hmm. it's real estate mm -hmm. and it's <laughs> a lot of money. You know, it there's is, a lot of is. finances circulating and the government is pushing for it. Yeah, mm -hmm. sure. So for me, I was like, you know what, let me try. I never sold anything before. Mm -hmm. So I was completely skeptical about uh -huh. my whole thing and my success. But I said, you know what, um, why not? Okay, if yeah. I fail, I fail. Yeah. Oh, okay. Now yeah. that that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So interesting. Uh, I think uh, your experience in real estate it's uh, uh, the same like uh, medical service. Yeah, mm. it's a good broker. Uh, yeah. If you work uh, with sector real estate, you need to uh, ask more questions. Yes. Yeah, yes. And uh, see, look into the deep for your uh, potential buyers. Yeah. Yes, I yes, think of it's uh, the same like yeah. uh, uh, professional medical and mm -hmm. brokers. Yeah. Yeah, yes, yes, hundred uh, percent. Maybe that's why you will be professional. Yeah, brokers. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, listen. Uh, I always think that what is the reason for success, right? It depends on how you approach the industry, and you are right because I was in medicine and because I like numbers, I like to study things, I like to analyze things. It made it 
different for me to approach real estate. So I don't approach it from, you know, this project was announced or this project is announced. Of course, yes, location is important. 100%. Everyone says that. But the numbers and the history of Dubai is more important when you're trying to sell. Mm -hmm. You know, so when you analyze and you can say, okay, based on the market statistics, based on the cycles that we saw previously, that makes you look a bit more credible, you Mm -hmm. know, because Mm -hmm. you can back Mm -hmm. it up by facts Mm -hmm. and people like facts more than just dreams. If you look into the your facts, so mm-hmm. you uh, became you became a uh, top performer mm-hmm. into your real estate agency 2022, 2023. Yes. How did you end up there? How did you land it out in, into the top performance places? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm listen. I'm very uh, competitive by nature. Oh, okay. I'm extremely competitive, okay. and I don't like to lose. Mm-hmm. So one thing I really enjoy still till this day in my Mm -hmm. company is that, you know, we can see how people perform. Mm -hmm. So that in itself drives you. Like Mm -hmm. if you have that Mm -hmm. in you, it will drive you to be better. Mm -hmm. And for me, my first deal, that 80 million was the first deal I made. Oh, really? Wow. That was the (laughs) biggest and the first deal (laughs) I had. And again, um, of course, there's an element of luck. There's Mm -hmm. an Mm -hmm. element of being in the right place at the right time. But I would highly, highly like underline the fact that you need to be very open to networking Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and not expect things from people. Mm -hmm. So this client that I had, it's actually one guy Mm -hmm. who, who was my friend Mm -hmm. that I met maybe like two weeks ago through my other friend at the dinner. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And that day, usually deals happen. (laughs) Yes. And that day I didn't even want to go, but Mm -hmm. I pushed myself because it's, it's the work, you know, mm-hmm. you never sleep anywhere you go, you yeah. meet people, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. So I went and I said, okay, whatever. I made great connections. We uh-huh. became amazing friends with their family. You know, the wife was expecting. So we clicked on many different uh-huh. levels and then by coincidence, uh, that's why I'm saying, you know, right time and right place by coincidence. I saw them in the elevator mm-hmm. one of the days and oh, okay. they were like, Oh, Karina, like you're in this office. I'm uh-huh. like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we exchanged numbers like officially. I never mm-hmm. like approach anyone mm-hmm. and try to say, okay, I'm in real estate. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Most of the time I don't even say what I do. I just say, okay, I'm wealth manager or I'm an investment, but that's uh-huh. it, uh-huh. you know? Um, so then I met them in the elevator. We clicked, we mm-hmm. exchanged numbers. And then he was like, oh, you know, my friend is actually thinking of buying property. Uh, do you want to go and like check things out whenever you're free? I'm like, yeah, sure, whatever, you know? I never expected his friend to buy Mm -hmm. and even more, I didn't expect him to buy. But in that one hour when he saw what I was proposing, Uh he bought three units for himself. Wow. His friends bought three units. (laughs) They called another guy and the guy also bought. (laughs) All in one hour. And at the end, I remember I texted, I texted my friends and I was like, what just happened? I was like, did I just close for like over 80? Like what? No way. Yeah. Yeah. That's not good. Yeah. That's not, not, not. Yeah. Yeah. That's sick. That's sick story. It's, it's a very interesting it's, like, it's story. Yeah. 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 That story is sick. Wow. We've never had it. That's such a, that's such a history. So that's yeah. fun. That's mm. fun. Wow. Yeah. So when you don't expect like things uh-huh. come, you know? Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. Whoa. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. And you, so you, you all, I'm sure you went nuts too. Uh, like when you get your commission listen yes this is the part like i don't like to say i close the deal Uh until i have that commission in my bank Uh account because until then there are so many things that can Mm -hmm. go wrong um so yeah but i'm i'm curious what it happened to you when the when you realized that you closed the deal and then Mm -hmm. um like so what what did you feel then when you closed your first deal honestly like it might sound surprising but Uh all i felt was okay the next deal i have to do better no way (laughs) yeah because Because it's hard, you know, like this is one thing about real estate. Mm -hmm. Once you set yourself up to a certain standard Mm -hmm. and, you know, obviously everyone talks about it because Mm -hmm. it's the first Mm -hmm. and it's big Mm -hmm. and whatever. And you're new and you're young. Mm -hmm. People will talk and people have a certain perception of you after this. Mm -hmm. Right. So for me, I was like, okay, so I need to do better. I need to do bigger Mm -hmm. and I need to always remain Mm -hmm. top. 
you know wow. so i felt it's stressed <laughs> to be yeah. honest yeah. okay okay but usually you know what, what what usually people say uh our our guests are saying whenever they get their first commission usually they like they just go nuts also but then mm. they just go and throw out their money into nightclubs and etc but yeah listen i'm a very uh introverted person mm -hmm. i would say like mm -hmm. i am extroverted in terms of talking to people mm -hmm. but i like my own space and i like to i am not a party person so i don't uh, care okay. that much uh, you yeah. know uh yes of course you splurge mm -hmm. you go shopping is, you buy is, yourself yeah. some nice stuff mm -hmm. but again mm -hmm. like as, as, as your rolex is. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> but that was not the first commission hey, no. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but a good eye good eye yeah. Yeah, yeah uh no but it's a very dangerous thing actually what you mentioned because this is what is. happens to a lot of people it is. if you don't know the worth of money or you've never been exposed to money before mm. certain amounts can sound and look like life-changing and of course a lot of people change it is mm -hmm. it is you it know is like it changes you, you, you of course to, it, yeah. It is, yeah you have and to control on one side you have to be outgoing you have to be everywhere you have to yeah. be seen by people yeah. on the other side you also don't want to be you know dumb mm -hmm. with your money um so a lot of people fall into that mm -hmm. trap mm -hmm. yeah, yeah unfortunately so interesting it yeah. is it is yeah. <laughs> so more a commission for one uh, deal yeah, yeah. if uh, we see all price uh, property uh, 80 million dollars yeah it's average price uh, for mm -hmm. one yeah mm -hmm. maybe eight uh, maybe eight seven 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 million dollars yeah mm. my question is uh, which uh, type uh, property you like it more maybe which uh, i like to work with uh, more yeah, yeah yeah uh listen i like investments right so it doesn't really matter if it's a studio in jvc mm -hmm. or if it's a three bedroom signature unit in mm -hmm. marina mm -hmm. right uh at the end of the day it has to make logical sense mm -hmm. and i like things that bring money for mm -hmm. me i would never right now invest or buy a villa just for myself mm -hmm. you know because uh needs change tastes change it's a very hard deal altogether on an agent as well i find because a lot of clients want something specific and mm -hmm. unless you find that it's a constant like mm -hmm. stress and you have to deal with it and uh, i just don't enjoy working that way for me it doesn't matter on the developer or you know the style all i care about is okay if we put money in here where is the security that worst case scenario we can just take the money out the mm. same amount mm -hmm. right so it doesn't mm -hmm. matter how much it is mm -hmm. yeah so this is the the type of properties i like to work with yeah oh, okay. personally yeah wow. yeah thank wow. you uh so if we see four uh areas and mm -hmm. uh, uh in other districts uh, maybe which you advise uh districts uh, for uh lifestyle in dubai yeah yeah uh, very interesting your uh mind. i mean listen lifestyle to live or for like to invest or to sell uh, I think I think for leave, yeah, because uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe seventy percent all potential buyers it's investors, yes, mm -hmm. but uh, thirty percent it's uh, who interested in the expat to Dubai, yeah, yeah, and, uh, yeah. A good uh, quality audience too. I mean, listen, Dubai overall uh, and UAE is a very high standard of living, right? So it's not like, for example, in Russia or Kazakhstan, you have very nice areas, and then mm -hmm. some areas are not right yes dubai has like dera and bird dubai and all of that stuff that makes sense but still uh overall everything is the same so it depends yes if you want a waterfront living i would personally choose imar beachfront mm -hmm. or palm mm. but not even the old palm right now for people who are looking to relocate i would say go to palm jebel ali mm. oh really palm jebel ali? yes yeah. yes i mean if you if you can wait until it's developed, yes. But if you're looking now, Palm, Imar Beachfront, uh, I really like uh, Mohammed bin Rashid City. Mm. I think it's amazing. Shoba, I think Shoba Heartland is a very good community. If you're a workaholic and you like that fast paced mm -hmm. moving life, DIFC or downtown wow. is the place. Yeah. yeah, it's a good place. Yeah. Really. But it depends, <laughs> you know, for example, me, I live in Business Bay in SLS. Uh -huh. So I, I enjoy that kind of lifestyle. And then once every two weeks, I would go to the beach. Mm -hmm. uh, but mm -hmm. if you have kids, for example, who are not in school and you want to have water and activities, mm -hmm. of course, uh, that side 
is amazing. It's a difference, yeah. yeah but right. I don't like Marina, to be honest. Yeah. I think it's a bit sure. old because it's the first community that was built. Yeah, yeah. But sure. if you're a Russian and you're an expat, maybe it's a good place to consider. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, interesting, that's interesting. Yeah. How did you find Dubai? Because mm-hmm. you've been here since 2021. Yes. And how did you find it? Didn't you feel uh, some, if we say that in, in terms of like uncompares to like between the woman and the w- mm-hmm. woman and man, how mm-hmm. do you feel that? Is it really, I mean, tough to compete within the with other real estate and uh, real estate brokers uh, mm-hmm. as, as a perfor- performed, mm-hmm. uh, you know, to... You, you yeah. get what I'm saying, right? Yes, yes. And um, so how did you find the Dubai and, uh, and yeah. all the performance of the real estate over here? Okay, so let me put this question into two categories. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, first, let's talk about Dubai as a let's whole, as a that. city, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, coming from America uh-huh. and the whole Me Too movement and uh-huh. feminism, uh-huh. it's a very different environment because it's, I like it a bit more because I'm, traditional Mm -hmm. so you know from post ussr countries it's a very different understanding between men and women and i've said it before on podcasts and i say it again because i truly believe it i don't think men and women are equal Mm -hmm. so for me in america that was a bit too much Mm -hmm. um because we're all good in different things right uh when it comes to real estate i don't find that you know it's harder or it's more competitive i don't feel any kind of let's say negativity in my side just because i'm a woman Mm -hmm. but there's also a flip side so a lot of people say that it's easier for women to close and be a successful real estate agent because of your looks and you know Etc. 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 Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and Dubai is known for being uh, Las Vegas for bachelors and whatever it is. you know. So it is, yeah. there is that stereotype that is kind of embedded into uh-huh. real estate industry, is. which is also one of the reasons I want to make an impact. Mm-hmm. This is one of the like goals for me mm-hmm. uh, because, it, on the contrary, I think it's harder for women to be professionals because it's very easy, I think, for girls who come into real estate uh-huh. to be easy. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. To go for easy money, uh, you know, it is, to it is, close yeah. deals in mm-hmm. any kind of way just I to get you. that. Yeah, yeah. I, I found it harder because when, you know, when people approach you or uh-huh. clients say something to you and you're not that type of girl, uh-huh. You're losing a client, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, yeah, so yeah, like yeah. You, you're literally telling <laughs> yeah. clients to go away. Uh-huh. Uh, but in the long term, mm-hmm. it's good. Yes, mm-hmm. of course. Yeah. Okay. And uh, do, would you recommend Dubai as a city and as a living? And uh, uh, if we compare it to of your experience within the US? I mean, it's different. Uh-huh. Uh, but I would say that for a woman, uh-huh. uh, young and whatever, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and ambitious, I think Dubai is better just because it's safer. Mm-hmm. Like, mm. you know, in America... I would not walk alone at night. Uh-huh. You know, I would just be a bit more cautious. And in Dubai, you don't think about these things yeah. to the point when yeah. you travel somewhere else, you're you're confused, mm-hmm. you know, like. So, yes, I would say Dubai is a great place. I personally don't think I would raise a family here, mm-hmm. but to work, to progress, to, you know, be respected, because, again, it's a Muslim country and city predominantly. Mm-hmm. So there's still that respect given to women in one way or another mm-hmm. got it well, you know yeah yeah that's uh really interesting um revert i guess yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah so uh karina maybe uh, you remember one interesting story uh, about a safe uh, story uh, dubai yeah mm. maybe uh, can you remember yes there are a lot uh i'm a very um do you host- have your own personal no, like, I don't like know. Of maybe if it happens to your friends or something like uh, that. No, no, no. It happened to me. Like, uh, for me, if I let, leave a car with, let's say, my belongings mm-hmm, and mm-hmm, stuff there, mm-hmm. anywhere else, I would freak out. Um, here, I freaked out, but nothing happened. And then the other story <laughs> is when I lost my purse, actually. Uh-huh. I left it somewhere. And um, yeah. And it was found maybe within like 30 minutes. Wow, so that wow. was, that was <laughs> crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. That's when I realized I was like, oh, okay, like this is why this is the place, you know, because 
nowhere else, like in the US, if I lost it, خلص, like I would not even look for it. I would just <laughs> cancel my cards, whatever, yeah. and I will just say goodbye. But here it's very different. Mm, yeah. Okay. And um, mm, my congrats, really. <laughs> yeah, it was yeah, a good right. save. Very good save. I'm happy that you find it was in the 30 minutes back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it was good. It was really good. Yeah. Wow. And what's your plans for for your future over here? Uh, so you you're planning to stay and work, right? You're mm-hmm. not planning to build your own career uh, in terms of the, like a career in terms of your family, but so mm-hmm. you're s- still planning to stay and work, right? And yeah. maybe you would build your own business. And what's your future plans? Yeah, I mean, listen, as, as uh, question, the whole yeah. family thing, I only say it because I'm young. Mm-hmm. I just turned 25. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, you know, for me, even though I have a bit of a traditional background, mm-hmm. the fact that I was in America and the way that things are changing, I just pushed it a bit later. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's why I don't think about family. And I think about the career. Yes, I want to stay here. Uh, do I want to have my own company? What I want to do? I don't really like to talk about these oh. things. Uh, <laughs> because I don't like to speak about them until they're done. Okay. I just don't speak before it's done. But okay. what I can say is, uh, doesn't matter, you know, if I'm with a company or I have my own company, um, for the career and for the legacy, what I want out of this progression, mm-hmm. um, I definitely want to shape the industry to be a bit more professional. Mm-hmm. Uh, I really like your ideas, guys, that you are teaching people and you're creating uh, information for people who are in mm-hmm. that industry, you know? And um, yeah, I've, we've got you, but I would not say that we are like a teaching, but we still, I mean, we're trying to uh, provide a service for people who would really use it. And yes, it's really, yes, really yes, useful. Of course. Yes, it's something yeah, that it, they it, can yeah, yeah, utilize yeah, yeah, and yeah. you're making it open to them, uh-huh, you know? Uh-huh. So you're helping them in that way. And um, I want the industry to be more professional. And uh, of course, yes, money Mm -hmm. and uh, exceeding my performances and Mm -hmm. being on top is obviously a goal Mm -hmm. um, and something I'm planning to do. But overall, the industry itself, it needs a bit more molding, I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, that's the overarching goal. If we talk about in terms of your profile for the real estate, mm-hmm. what are you more into the focused? So you are more, I guess, focused into the residential or mm-hmm. like you, you do a commercial or you do rents or like, yeah. what's, what's your profile? Yeah, I started doing rents. I probably uh-huh. did like one or two and then I said, no, uh, it's Why? too much headache for nothing. Uh-huh. Like if you're comparing work you put for a sale versus work you put for rent and the outcomes. Yeah, we talk it doesn't about make outcomes, any sense, yeah. you know? And in yeah. real estate and in general, you know, time is money, honestly. So I would not put my time into rent uh-huh. and get yeah. something much less mm-hmm. when I can close a sale. So I do primarily sales. Mm-hmm. I only work mm-hmm. residential because commercial, um, again, you know, it, it comes into the whole real estate industry. Mm-hmm. A lot of people don't understand that commercial real estate is completely different. There's a lot of regulations and yes. a lot of laws uh-huh. that you as an expert need to know in order to do commercial. Mm-hmm. It's not the same as residential. Mm-hmm. So I give, and I take my hat off to everyone who does commercial because it's truly something completely different. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just admire from afar and I don't touch commercial at all. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, that's interesting. And what do you think of the, for example, like as you've seen of, uh, probably as you've seen of some of the future upcoming projects uh, for for some other countries, for example, if we, if we talk about the KSA mm-hmm. and then uh, of their big ambition, what do you mm-hmm. think of their big ambitions when they say, uh, uh, you, all of you guys, probably you've seen it. If you don't see it, go and watch. It says, uh, you just type <laughs> the, the project, the line, mm-hmm. and you would see, you've seen it, right? Yes. yes and when, when they say that we will we'll build it within the like, next eight years or 10 years, whatever, yeah. I'm not bragging them, but would you go and take the opportunity to also go there and make money and uh, make investment? over there for your investors and uh, what do you think of those like big ambitions for 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 other countries yes yes i mean listen if we're talking about saudi in specific uh to the question would i move there to make money no i would not move just to for you know for the whole future plan i would still stay in dubai but would i recommend it to someone maybe maybe when I see it coming to life, you have to understand with Saudi, I think the whole horizontal city, the line is a cool project. It's very imaginative and it's out there. The whole vision 
I don't think they will reach it in time. Mm -hmm. It's a very short time. Mm -hmm. And like politically and economically speaking, of course, it makes sense why Saudi is doing it. Yeah, because they are replicating what Dubai has done. And unfortunately for them, they don't have that much time to do it, you know, so they don't have that 50 years that Dubai had. Mm -hmm. So they want to do it faster and better and compete. Would you recommend it as a, as a, in terms of the investment making money? Not now. Not now. Not now. Okay. When this, like, okay, Saudi is becoming a bit less conservative, a bit less, you know, like it's opening up, mm -hmm. but it's not there yet. Yeah. Uh -huh. So I cannot in my right mind uh -huh. tell my client or my investor, you know what? Yes, mm -hmm. trust me because I I don't trust it. Yeah, right. Yeah. Like so, 100%. when when I see it coming to that potential, and more people are traveling there, and they are attracting expats, mm -hmm. not only through like high wages, yeah, but they're also uh, increasing the tourism, the infrastructure, everything. Yeah. Uh -huh. Then yes, but mm -hmm. for now no. That's interesting, yeah, and, and uh, uh, it's a it's a different uh, nature, really. Yes, yes, of uh, Saudi course. Arabia and Dubai, and I think uh, it's Dubai. It's a uh, lighter, yeah, in uh, all uh, manner region. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, Saudi Arabia, maybe second. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but listen, listen, is Dubai is mostly expats, <laughs> right? It is. It's what maybe twenty percent locals. And this is a good thing for Dubai. And I think this is a problem for mm -hmm. Saudi now, because the more they attract expats, they also need to keep the local population happy, right? So if they're yeah. giving higher wages, they need to sustain them. And then there's a ratio mm -hmm. and everything mm -hmm. like that. So it's a very delicate situation and position that mm -hmm. they're in now. So once they show how they're handling it properly and, you know, avoiding all the sharp edges, let's say, and, you know, the only thing that a bit I, I'm a bit skeptical about Saudi is because Saudi is rich only until oil yeah. runs out. Yeah, it's right. Not, it's not a construction uh, performer. Yeah. Uh, so eight yeah. years, okay, they will do the whole project. Mm -hmm. They will get the local investors to come in to yeah, support sure. whatever. But will they be able to sustain the same thing if the oil is not there? Mm -hmm, that's mm -hmm. the question oh, for yeah. dubai okay, we know that they can because mm -hmm. oil is not the most it like is. dominant yeah, 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 thing yeah. you know yeah, there's tourism economy, there's yeah. everything mm -hmm. else so how many time uh, you think i needed uh, to grow uh construction uh, infrastructure and another uh, in saudi I arabia i think at least let's say the whole infrastructure and the biggest thing is the mentality that needs to be a bit more open. So mm -hmm. I would say at least 10 years mm -hmm. for people to perceive wow. Saudi even as close, not even as Dubai, but just like closer to Dubai, mm -hmm. at least 10 years. I agree with you. Wow. The same like maybe Russell Hema, no? Uh, Russell Hema <laughs> wants casinos there. Yeah. Plus, like it's, it's, it's booming. It's, it's, it's hot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think Russell Hema, uh, the, the islands on the Russell Hema is already nuts and hot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I'm more uh, curious in terms of your um, uh, personality and uh, mm -hmm. in terms of your uh, skills into mm -hmm. real estate and as our audience. So people go into the real estate of, if we talk about in terms of the investment, when people, mm -hmm. uh, the clients, investors give, give you the, handles you the money to book it or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. And um, so people go go through the trust, right? While they don't have any trust, they, they would not like yes, hand you the yes, money, of right? Course, yeah. And my question is, how did you build the trust with your investors? I never tried to sell them anything. <laughs> But okay, okay, I know it but, sounds. I know it sounds very then, like, weird. Uh huh. Uh, but because you know, maybe it helped me the fact that I studied uh, neuroscience and like public health. Oh, okay. Because I understand psychology, uh -huh. right? Mm -hmm. Like it's uh, it's a simple thing, especially when you get to ultra high net worth individuals. Mm -hmm. Like they're not dumb, mm -hmm. you know. So they know when people are trying to sell you, and mm -hmm. I said the same thing uh, about that point in my previous podcast uh, but let's say okay sweden right and mm -hmm. you know the brand ikea yep. yep in ikea you're not allowed to go and talk to the customer you know that in uh, sweden 
I have no it's idea. It's an I've actual never been policy. <laughs> yeah. So when you come in, they're just there okay. like, mm-hmm. to help you if you need it. Oh, but they're not okay. harassing you. They're not coming to you saying, okay, check this out or mm-hmm. check this out. Mm-hmm. It's actually a very cool thing. And mm-hmm. like, it's a very nice trick mm-hmm. because when you are harassed and when you are pushed and when you know that, okay, I sit in front of you, mm-hmm. I say, hi, how are you? I mm-hmm. smile, whatever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But you know that I want to sell you something, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right? So you're not going to open up. You're not going to be relaxed. You're not going to, mm-hmm. you're yeah. always going to yeah. think about it. Mm-hmm. So I never try to sell. I would always try to be friends mm-hmm. because then I can truly understand. When true, we're friends, true. you can tell me, you know what, Karina, let's say I sent you a project and I said, this is this, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. this is why I think you should invest. This is how much you're going to get. If you trust me, you can call me and say, listen, Karina, you know what? Remember we invested in two other apartments. I don't really have that much money. Mm -hmm. So, you know, maybe I have a hundred thousand. Let's put it in something else. Mm -hmm. What do you think? You know, so then it allows for like back and forth conversation. No, I got it. Yeah. Yeah. And I hate when like, because my number floats in the database as well. Uh Uh So a lot of agents uh, text me and... Uh The whole approach, I don't understand Mm -hmm. because I can see it firsthand on me Mm -hmm. and I would never even like entertain it. I would never even reply to that, Mm -hmm. you know, because if you come into saying like you want to buy or do you want to sell your Mm -hmm. property? I'm, let's say, Max from whatever Mm -hmm. XY Mm -hmm. company. Mm -hmm. No, like you have to build that connection and you have to build that understanding as a human, Mm -hmm. not just a business, right? As a human. Yeah, yeah, yeah then okay uh-huh. then we can make some business then we can talk okay yeah well that's interesting yeah it's a good strategy yeah yeah, yeah. well it's a true strategy life strategy it is yeah, <laughs> yeah it is you have to yeah. become a friend it is and yeah well we i just want to say that we are uh, coming up into the end i mean it, it is already the end of our podcast it was mm-hmm. really nice and small talks no uh, no 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 please <laughs> no <laughs> but anyway so i just want to say that two people who are watching into us uh, thanks for watching till the end and we really appreciate that you guys are watching in stay tuned we're going to have really really next uh, upcoming up project uh, the po- projects in terms of the podcast and yeah yeah, yeah we are right uh, instagram karina with mm-hmm. our uh with our youtube channel yeah and uh, thanks a lot for thank you guys so much yeah, yeah, we, i really enjoyed it really pre- we appreciate it yeah i think uh me and my uh, me and our audience actually got a lot of a lot of uh, useful information i hope so yes, uh, yes. through you and uh, that was interesting talk by the way yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah thank you guys so much thank you thanks yeah. see you next time yes, yeah, we'll yes. until next a, time everyone yeah yeah <laughs> i'll be happy to see you on the next time and talk larger and yes, maybe talk more in terms of the psychology how how does it works and mm-hmm. yeah yeah stay tuned perfect thank you guys yeah. thank you